Zach here from Universal Air. Let's bag a race car. Zach here from Universal Air. Let's bag a race car. The customer has a Z4 race car that he takes out to the track all the time and he's having a problem with actually getting it up and down as far as his trailer to get it on and off with the front spoiler. So what he wants it to be able to do is to be able to raise the car up and down with our air suspension. Our customer currently has the KW variant 3 coilovers on there. We're going to just replace the spring out for our bag and still keep that performance damper so we can still have its performance out at the track. Up front we have the KW coilovers and they also do have the rebound control. They're controlled from underneath down here. And then same thing, he wanted to go really low with it. And the springs are really loose when he's at full droop. Well, the game plan here is we'll make a lower bracket that'll slide over this coilover body and sit on top of this factory adjuster. And then he can actually dial it in and hopefully tighten it down so it doesn't move when he turns his wheels. As well as up top, we're gonna go ahead and make a new upper strut mount. So that way we can move this entire assembly up and that'll allow for more drop. Now a couple things to note with this GT3 kit on here, with this wheel and tire combination, he's actually coming in contact with this fender and front splitter at full droop. Also back here in the rear, it's coming in contact with this rear pinch weld when he goes to make a full lock on his turn. super low with it because with the wheel and tire offsets you can actually come in contact with the fenders when he goes if you try to lay it all the way flat on the ground. The customer's main concern is to try to be able to drive with it at a decent ride height along with being able to raise it up extra high for the loading on and off the trailer for going to and from the track. We're going to go ahead and make up a special tool to spread this spindle up to get the strut out of the spindle. What we need to do is we need to make a little tool that will go inside of here and spread this out. Uh, we do have one that we use for most BMWs, but for some reason, this one doesn't want to work. So we'll just have to make a new one. Here's a little quick simulation on what we're gonna make. So after using that little piece of scrap, we went ahead and made up a little tool to spread that spindle. We're gonna go ahead and take our little tool, slide it in here. ahead and take apart this front strut assembly so we can go ahead and mock it up and see how it fits. When designing these mounts we have quite a few different options of what we can do. We can either keep the original upper mount that came with the KWs which will give them the camber adjustment out of it but also will sacrifice his drop. The other route is we can make him a new upper strut mount which will eliminate that camber adjustment but allow for more drop. Let me show you what I mean. We can start off by making a plate like this where we do a pocket in it for this um, KW bearing unit to go into which will allow for the rotation for the steering and that do a little pocket for that to slide down into. But the challenge with that is as, as you can tell the entire stack up here from the upper strut mount to the pillow ball bearing and the rotation bearing gets to be quite thick. When we actually add on doing a plate similar to this, from this mount right here to this mount right here, we're gonna be at roughly two inches of height. And then also the shock shaft itself, you can tell it's fairly recessed down inside this plate. What that's going to do is make it act like it's a longer strut. Or in our case, what we're gonna do is move this part further into the engine compartment, which will give it more drop like it's a shorter strut. Because with the KWs, our, fixed length, our body length here is fixed, so we're not able to actually shorten up the strut to make it get the car down lower. Whereas if we make a new mount similar to this one, from the top mount to the top of the bag is only 7 eighths of an inch, so it's going to be down quite a bit shorter, quite a bit lower if you will. Also, the pillow ball location on this one is further towards the top of the plate, which is going to make it act like a shorter strut. This route right here will get us about another inch of drop, 
We need to check with the customer if, see what's more important to him, see if he wants to keep the camber adjustment or if he wants to keep the lower drop out of it. Now we can build a certain amount of camber into the plate, say something like this, but it will be a fixed unit at this height. When we started, the vehicle was actually already centered, so that makes me believe he doesn't really need the added camber that he can get out of his plate. So after talking with the customer, he wants us to go ahead and add in a little bit of camber for it, and we're gonna go ahead and remake that upper plate to get it down lower. What we've gone ahead and done is we offset the three bowl pattern for the vehicle versus the center hole where the pillow ball is gonna be. That's going to allow the wheels to be cambered in this far. Um, it works out to being about three-eighths of an inch in order to get that 0.8 degrees that the customer was after according to what KW does with their um, plate right here for their adjustment range. Done both sides. So we have this one going over to the left and then from this way it's going over towards the right. And then we'll use that for the left and right panels, left and right strut mounts for the vehicle. And then we've got our bolt pattern here where we need to drill our holes. And of course for the other side it's gonna be mirrored the other way. Go ahead and set up and run these sparks. Go ahead and do a quick simulation on how it's going to look. Pop our three holes, open up the center for the pillow ball, and call it a day. As you saw, we went and did these three holes as well as the center section. Now we're going to put it in there and do the side face off and route side profile for our rights and our lefts. We pull up our program that we just made in the other room. The offset left one first, which these holes are offset to the left side of the center hole. So let's get it probed in and ready to go. All right, we have our strut mounts all built up. We've gone ahead and offset both sides left and right, just over three eighths, or just under three eighths of an inch. So here's our set of cam custom cambered upper strut mounts ready for the Z4. Time to get a quick mock-up of how this is gonna go together and then we'll go ahead and test fit inside the vehicle to see how it's going to get us on our drop and also to see if it's gonna be low enough. With the strut assembled up, we're gonna mock it up inside the car and see how it fits. We'll check our travels and our drops. We've gone and done a quick mock-up inside the vehicle by putting the strut back in, along with bolting in the upper strut mount and raising up this lower bracket because the distance from here to the bottom side of the Delrin plate is adjusted to where our bag's being bottomed out. At this height, our tire is gonna hit the inner fender well section and underneath the plastic liners, the actual metal structure of the vehicle is right below that. So at this point, this is as much drop as we can get out of it without chopping up the body. Since the vehicle has been wide bodied, the wheels have been pushed out, giving us more room on the backside for the bag in order to drop the bag down behind the tire. One thing we will need to address is the top part of the sway bar bracket on the strut is coming in contact with this lower strut bag mount. If we notch it like this, we can go ahead and slide it down so that way this will have to be relieved out for the lower for the lower bracket have to be relieved out for the upper sway bar bracket mount. So for clearance for that sway bar ear, we've gone ahead and did a little notch right here in the bracket. And if you want to go ahead and simulate it, what we're going to be doing inside the machine, take this end mill in here, start whittling away a little trough in there, and come back in, clean up the edges, and a quick chamfer around, and it's good to go. Gone ahead and notched out the plate for the sway bar bracket to go in there. So give us the clearance we need so this can slide all the way up against the spring part. Now the other side is done. There's our notch in there. It's got plenty of space for the tab to come up inside. And then we can run our fitting out this side on, along the bottom side of the strut and loop it up to the body. Or if we put this plate on the other side, the fitting will be coming out the back side. We have to wait and see which one's gonna work the best for this application. We've done a quick mock-up here to see how we're gonna be on our drop height. 
Uh, we are fully laying on the inner fender well up here, so we can't get down anymore. And as far as our bag clearances go, we got space for days up there. So go ahead and check the distance from the top Delrin plate to the bottom bracket, get that adjusted and dialed in, and it'll be good to replicate it on the other side. I went ahead and threw a notch in the KW lower spring perch. Um, we've assembled our bag onto our brackets for the bottom side, and then the top Delrin plate as well. And we're gonna go ahead and get this thing thrown together. Quick update for you guys. We got the bag mounted over the strut. We got the bottom all buttoned up. We did have to extend his sway bar end links because we're going so low that the sway bar was binding up. And as of right now, we're doing a quick mock-up for some height sensor placement. Um, looking to tag in with the lower sway bar end link mount down there and do a little extension tab to fix the leverage out here. And we'll probably put the sensor right over somewhere in this area. And as far as when they're fully dropped, we're gonna be laying the tire on the inner fender well. The nice thing is when we go up with it, with this mount down here, we can just do a simple bolt the sensor onto this inner uh, wheel well area and then run the linkage down to this side. So it'd be good to go on the back on the front height sensors. There's our little relief cut that we did in the lower bag plate. And we went ahead and marked out this lower spring perch where the air fitting needs to come through. So we're gonna have to do a little relief on this KW lower spring adjuster. So that way the airline can pass through. So what we've done on this upper strut mount, we have this, first of all, we, there's what that camber built in that saw us making earlier. And then we have a Delrin bearing and what that allows it to do is when you turn the steering, this bearing material will pivot against this aluminum upper strut mount over the pillow ball going down the center of it. This will give a real nice smooth steering and allowing it to be so thin to get that extra drop out of it. That's gonna go ahead and do it for the front. On the next video, we'll take care of the rear and actually do the air management install. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit like. And any questions or comments, please comment down below. And we'll see you soon.